So I'm going to go ahead and zoom back and move on to our last two little bits. And one of them is this little bolt piece and then this little cylinder. Now, as you'll notice, these two pieces aren't attached either. And so we can actually go ahead and for this back cylinder piece is just quickly throw down the basic edge control just like a normal cylinder that we would do. Uh, you know, just grab that face, switch to edge mode, go ahead and turbo smooth that uh, once we've added that extrude. And we can go ahead and hide that guy as well. And so now we're looking at this bolt piece here. Now I'm going to break this down just a little bit and show you exactly how I cut this bolt piece in. Uh, the end result is looking pretty good. What I'm looking for is sort of a, uh, you know, like an Allen wrench style bolt. And this is a little bit more complex of a shape than the little nubby bolt. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and break that down for you now and show you exactly how I cut this shape in. And so the first thing that I'll do is I'll go ahead and start by thinking about what sort of a bolt shape I want to work with. In this case, this is a six-sided uh, sort of an Allen wrench shape. And so, for example, if I go ahead and turbo smooth it, you can kind of see what I'm talking about. It's basically got six flat angles that I want to ultimately create. And so what I will do is I will start by going into a front view uh, with this object selected. And I will go ahead and create a cylinder which is going to basically be, um, you know, sort of the width that I'm looking for. And since I know that it's going to be a six-sided uh, hole that I want to cut in here, I'm going to go ahead and double that and start with a 12-sided uh, cylindrical shape. And we don't need to worry about any height segments. Um, but if I go ahead and to the top view and go ahead and convert this to double poly, uh, I'm going to go ahead and line these two up just so they're really, really close to each other so we can kind of take a look at them. And what I'll do from here start by deleting out the front face here that I have as well as the back part we're not going to need to worry about either of those two uh, faces while we're working with this shape so I'm going to go ahead and grab this back border and just kind of pull this up just slightly and so by grabbing the outer edge of the uh, cylindrical shape I'm going to go ahead and hold down the shift key and again I'm in border mode here you could do this with border mode or edge mode selection and just hold down the shift key and by pulling this out this is going to actually add uh, basically kind of like an extrusion of those edges and then from here just sort of scale these in just a little bit um, to, you know however much it is that I want the uh, bolt to kind of uh, bend in and then holding down the shift key again I can go ahead and use the scale tool uh, to scale inward and then you know move it and just sort of adjust it to kind of get the depth that I'm looking for uh, for the actual width of this bolt now I can go back and forth from the top view as well and I'm gonna go ahead and pull this up just slightly kinda pull these pieces in just a little bit as well and bring this in uh, to get it really really close and so from here, the next step that I'm going to work with is actually starting to kind of rough in exactly uh, how I cut in the final uh, shape for the, the hole where the Allen wrench would, would fit into. And so now by going ahead and holding the Allen shift, I'm going to go ahead and scale these all the way in. And I'm going to switch to a front view. And basically where I want the actual bolts to meet up, I'm going to go ahead and change to vertice mode. And I'm going to go ahead and actually use the collapse tool and grab every other group of two of these vertices and go ahead and just collapse them together. And all I'm doing is I'm just using the collapse tool and the uh, repeat last function, which the hotkey for that is the uh, semicolon. And so I'm just going ahead and collapsing these down. Now one thing that you'll notice also is that my angle now for that hole that I've cut in is offset just a little bit uh, from the angle. And so the next thing that I will do is I can go ahead, go ahead and just rotate this. And since this is a perfect uh, cylindrical shape, it should line up so that you know that your angles are straight up and down, left to right. And that way that the actual hole uh, that we're going to cut in is going to be straight up and down as well. Now you may want to have it angled like that. I mean, that's entirely up to you. Uh, but for the sake of this, I'm going to go ahead and have this so that the shape uh, meet up straight up and down. So I'm going to go ahead and move this over. And the next step that we're going to work with is I'm going to go ahead and grab that border and using the exact same trick, you know, go ahead and hold down the shift key and then go ahead and pull this in just a bit. And I'm going to go ahead and scale it inward just a tiny as a little bit as well, um, just because we want to have we want it to have a little bit of depth, you know, whether we're baking this for a normal map or or even just to showcase it um, as the high poly having a little bit of an angle like that's going to look look a little bit nicer. And so with that border selected, I can also right click and click cap. And that's going to fill in that hole with a polygon uh, that's going to basically create the backing for that bolt area that we're looking for. 
And so from here, I can go ahead and, and add some extra edge control that we're, we're going to need. But the one thing that you're going to want to notice is that each of these edges is going to want to have a little bit of a chamfer to it um, so that we can kind of round that shape off. And so one quick easy thing that I like to do is I'm going to go ahead and right click chamfer and bring the actual chamfer amount down relatively low and just just sort of pinch it in so that when we do apply our edge control over here um, you'll notice that, that that way each of these edges is at least getting a little bit of that softness of that edge control uh, so by, by now we can just go ahead and click OK and now I'm gonna go ahead and grab each of these little extra edges that it created and by holding down control and clicking backspace um, that's going to go ahead and get rid of all those edges as well as the vertices that make them up. And so even now, if I if I go ahead and put Turbo Smooth, you can kind of start to get an idea of what's happening. Um, it's, st it's starting to kind of pinch that shape in, but obviously we need some more edge control in there in order to uh, be able to maintain that form. And the easiest way to do that is just go ahead and grab any one of these inner ones and go ahead and ring them. And we're going to go ahead and use the Connect tool, and we're going to add two segments of Connect. And go ahead and pull this in a bit. And then we're going to go to face mode and we need to go ahead and add an extra polygon on the inside or rather an extra edge uh, just so it doesn't all you know kind of crunch in if you look at it now it's it's starting to get a little bit crunchy inside there and, and we want to flatten that out and the easiest way we can do that is just by grabbing that polygon right click click inset and then setting that inset amount um, you know as desired just just so that there's a little bit of that edge control for that inside edge and so now by going ahead and adding that turbo smooth modifier that's going to get you really really close to that sort of a final shape that we were looking for uh, over here with our original high poly bolt that we created and so that's just one of the basic techniques to create a little bit of a sort of an allen wrench cut in there uh, you'll notice mine's just a slight bit bigger you know you can get creative as far as uh, you know how wide you want this to go and all that would be is is when you're at the very beginning is just sort of uh, space this stuff out just a little bit further uh, to go ahead and cut that shape in and so I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of that one and go ahead and unhide all of our parts again so if we go ahead and pull the camera back you can see that we've made some pretty strong progress on the majority of the objects that we've created here on the top part of this light. Now next up what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at a little bit more of a complex pole that we have created here as well as a lot of the details that go into this walk don't walk uh, little light box that we also have uh, including a little bit more on another complex bolt shape that we're going to create down here at the bottom uh, as well as some basic stuff like the base and this sort of a plating part that is holding the light up.